Welcome back. Thank you so much for tuning in for what has been a truly magical Thursday morning. What would it be without adding the beauty and magic of nature? And we are joined by Dr. Bernice Van Hastien and maybe the little bunny gave it away. She is an expert <laughs> on these incredible creatures. I'm learning all sorts of amazing new facts. Um, for instance, that um, the riverine rabbit um, has now been listed as critically endangered, which is terrifying, and that rabbits actually have a fear of heights. You wonder why he's looking so nervous, but we're, we're going to really plug into your incredible knowledge base here um, and have a little bit of fun exploring these animals that also culturally, I think, um, from a human perspective, we often associate with rebirth. There is, mm. there is something mystical, magical about these beautiful creatures, and they are, without a doubt, one of the most adorable things, I think, within the animal kingdom. But let's focus first on um, them in their native wild. In, mm. I think we, we are far too often associate them as, as being pets, yes. um, and they, I think, do make wonderful pets because they are by the looks of it incredibly affectionate I know does he have a name he she um this is violet she's violet. a little girl she's Aww. very sweet she is gorgeous yeah. obviously a little bit nervous so it's got to be overwhelming if it's overwhelming for a human to come into this <laughs> environment you can imagine um for a creature that size it really is but let's talk about them in the wild is it is it safe to approach if you can catch one if you're fast enough to get close to a rabbit in the wild i've heard that they are quite territorial mm -hmm. are rabbits in the wild dangerous um no, look, um, if you can catch a rabbit in the <laughs> wild, you will be uh, pretty impressive. No, they are very nervous creatures. They are territorial, but they will be dangerous or territorial only towards other bunnies. So if you, um, if a rabbit sees you approaching, it's going to run very fast in the other direction. I don't think you Chances need to... Chances are you won't even get to see them. Exactly. So I don't think you need to be worried if you see is it, one. Is They're it not very male dangerous. territorial? Is it within... Um, both genders? Do both genders. Them? Actually, wow. females are extremely territorial. To try and introduce a new female into another female's um, environment can lead to a lot of fighting. And despite them being um, very cute and fluffy, they can actually be very vicious towards each other. That's seen some big Why fights. is that? Why do they protect their territory so viciously? Um, I think they're wired that way. You know, um, for them, it, it's uh, when, you, when you deal with in nature, you know, for an animal, the territory it means food. Um, it means breeding opportunity, it means housing, um, all of those things are very important. So we find that a lot of wild animals are extremely territorial about what, about what they consider is theirs. You brought three, by the looks of it, very different um, little mammals with you this morning. Yes. Um, how many breeds exist within the rabbit, rabbit kingdom, if I can call it that? Um, well, we've got lots of breeds of, these are all domestic rabbits. So um, these all descend from European rabbits um, originally, but we have many different species as well. So you've got a lot of wild rabbits. We have about six different species in South Africa, which are wow. the, the wild species. These are all sort of part of the, the original European one, and they're the ones that have been domesticated. The rest we only find in the wild. So there's, there are many, many of them. Um, when we talk about the, the species here in South Africa, mm. what sort of ecosystems do they exist and where are you likely to see a rabbit as fleeting as it will be? <laughs> <laughs> so, um, obviously the areas that are least populated is going to be more favourable for them. Um, something like the riverine rabbit, which you mentioned before, um, they prefer um, the sides of rivers where the soil is very sandy. Um, they need to dig and they're actually the only um, rabbit species in that South Africa that actually digs to form a barrow to oh. have their babies in there. So they're very reliant on that soft um, river soil to live. Um, other, river, other rabbits will prefer areas that are shrubbery, um, denser, they feel a bit safer, they don't, you know, long grassy areas, they will prefer not to be out in the open where something can see and eat them. Yeah, where, where birds of prey can, yeah. uh, can spot them. Um, oh, fantastic. Well, we're going to get into the domestic side of, of keeping rabbits as, as pets and what we mm. need to be aware of and, and um, a bit more on the riverine rabbits. We'd love to hear from you. If you've got any questions to ask, 021-430-9881. We'll be heading back into the wild in a moment. It's my feel good now we continue our chat about these gorgeous, fluffy little creatures with Dr. Bernice Van Hasten, who is an expert um, in this area. We are dealing with all kinds of bunnies, and um, we've spoken about them in the wild. Now we are looking at domestic, and we know that they make amazing pets, very affectionate. I see uh, Violet, she's calmed down a little bit. Yes, um, but we've got enough. Danae on the line right now, phoning us all the way from Pretoria. Very good morning, Danae. How are you? Good morning, I'm well in yourself. Very good, thanks. I'm, I'm feeling a lot of love here. These, these little creatures are so cute. But I understand you've got quite an interesting question to pose. Yes, I would like to know what to do when traveling long distances with the rabbits. Um, very good question. I would, I would imagine a lot of people are very emotionally connected to them. Um, are, you, are you traveling within the country? Are you wanting to go abroad, overseas? 
in the country, but the two provinces, Eastern Cape and Western Cape, so it's quite far. Okay, so I'm, there I'm guessing quarantine's not going to be an issue. No. Do rabbits travel well? Are they quite anxious in that space? What do you suggest? Um, yeah, unfortunately, rabbits rabbits are not easy travellers. They get a bit stressed in the car. Um, there's no there's no quick way of really getting them there um, that's less stressful for them. I think a rabbit once he's settled in his cage, he'll be more comfortable. There are occasionally people would use something like um, rescue remedy drops for the bunnies to calm them down a bit. We don't normally recommend doing anything more serious than that. Just um, frequent breaks, lots of treats, lots of love. Um, calming them is and what flying would that be an option flying with flying is an option flying is shorter yeah. yes it probably would be less stressful for them oh mm. Danae, so you can travel just yeah, obviously be mindful of it but thank you very very interesting question mm. okay, i'm dying to to get hair all over me here can i can i grab violet and then you can introduce well. us to this gorgeous little thing um hello there you go. okay so just i've got to hold her by the little bum so that she doesn't feel scared she feels pretty chilled Look at that she little face, man. Lollipop. Thank you. I will win you over with some kale. Um, very, very sweet. Okay, so um, just very quickly, lastly, introduce us to the breeds that you've you've brought in with you. Well, um, this very cute little guy here is called Toffee. Uh, Toffee is a little dwarf bunny. He's one of the smallest ones we've got available, and um, he's very, very lovely. Um, that is Violet is a Jersey Woolly. So a Jersey she's Woolly. A dwarf with Angora yeah. type hair. You're gonna um, eat my we've microphone. got another one trying to escape here, so I'm going to just close that. <laughs> another little. <laughs> and then that beautiful boy down there is a Flemish giant. He's only six months old. He's four kilograms now, so he's going to get a lot wow. bigger um, as he gets older. He's one of the, the biggest breeds we've got, is the Flemish giant. Oh, man, and she, yeah. oh, she's just so lovely, man, and she's just melted into my hand. You are, without a doubt, the most luxurious little animal I have ever encountered. Doctor, I wish we could keep you out all day. I wish we could keep your little creatures out <laughs> all day, but thank you so much. Um, hugely interesting, and I think anyone wanting to keep them as pets, um, just be very very mindful that they are um, prone to anxiety. They do require very specific um, things to be aware of. So, so do a, a lot of research before you adopt them as pets, but they, they do make unbelievably wonderful companions. So doctor, thank, thank you. you so much for spreading your love of these beautiful little creatures. We're gonna see you after the break. No more? Pleasure. Are you on thank a diet?